Good afternoon, everyone. I am Abby Elizabeth, and this is the Earth and Vessels YouTube channel. This channel is for Christian women, but anyone is welcome to listen. I want to speak to those of you who are my sisters in Christ about the wilderness. You know, Jesus Christ, the Son of God, after he was baptized, went into the wilderness driven by the Holy Spirit of his Father. And he was there for 40 days and 40 nights, and he fasted for 40 days and 40 nights. And then, when he was unhungered, he was tempted. He was visited uh, by the tempter. So we can read of this in Matthew chapter 4, and may the Lord bless the reading of his word. And as then was Jesus led up of the Spirit, into the wilderness to be tempted of the devil. And when he had fasted forty days and forty nights, he was afterward unhungered. And when the tempter came to him, he said, If thou be the Son of God, command that these stones be made bread. But he answered and said, It is written, Man shall not live by bread alone but by every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of God. Then the devil taketh him up into the holy city, and setteth him on a pinnacle of the temple, and saith unto him, If thou be the Son of God, cast thou thyself down. For it is written, He shall give his angels charge concerning thee, and in their hands they shall bear thee up, lest at any time thou shalt thou dash thy foot against a stone. Jesus said unto him, It is written again, Thou shalt not tempt the Lord thy God. Again, the devil taketh him up into an exceeding high mountain, and showeth him all the kingdoms of the world, and the glory of them, and said, saith unto him, All these things will I give thee, if thou wilt fall down and worship me. Then saith Jesus unto him, Get thee hence, Satan, for it is written, Thou shalt worship the Lord thy God, and him only shalt thou serve. Then the devil leaveth him. Behold, angels came and ministered unto him. You might be asking, Why, Sister Abby, did you read this to us? Well, the reason why is because those who are young in the faith sometimes don't recognize what happens once we are baptized in Jesus' name. Once we have done what Jesus Christ commanded and be baptized in his name, that does not necessarily mean that now everything is going to be easy. As a matter of fact, usually what happens is there is a period in the wilderness where we are tempted of the enemy. And the enemy tries different things, as he did with the Son of God, and we're not above the Master. So what happened with him often happens with us. So one is to um, get us to, to do something that is contrary to the provision of God, to seek to find our own way, our own provision. And this is something that I run into a lot, with various sisters who contact me. And, and the enemy tries to tempt us when we're new Christians into relying on things of this world that we used to rely upon and tries to make us fearful. And uh, we don't want to be doing this. So we can answer that with man does not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of God. So as Christians, we recognize that when we seek the kingdom of God and his righteousness first, that then all our needs will be provided for. And this is a promise. But it's not always just like um, instantaneous. It's a way of walking. And when Jesus was tempted in the wilderness, he was in the wilderness for 40 days and 40 nights, fasting and praying. And so we can see that sometimes what happens to us when we are young Christians is temptation that isn't immediately answered. And the reason for this is to strengthen our faith, 
And I would say that every single Christian has a testimony of a wilderness experience where they were wandering in the desert alone and they were being tempted on the one hand and on the other hand learning that in deprivation in fear and doubt and temptation to continually turn to the word of God and answer these kinds of temptations from God's word. In the second temptation that is written here, the enemy uses scripture as a weapon against the Son of God. And he quotes scripture to him. And he says, you know, why not cast yourself off this pinnacle here? Because the angels are commanded, charge over thee, lest you harm yourself in any way. Of course, if the Son of God had done this, he would have died. This would have been a suicidal act and that the tempter was trying to get him to do something that would cause him to sin and, and and to die in a sin which is something that would forbid them the Messiah from redeeming mankind that's the kind of thing the enemy tries to get us to do he through the misquoting of Scripture the misuse of Scripture is something that we have to be very careful about not every scripture applies to every situation. And the enemy likes to misuse scripture in such a way as to get us to sin. And there are many examples of that that I could talk about, but for the purpose of this video, I think that most of you who follow this channel are well aware that Satan can twist scripture in order to convince us that something is God's will when in fact it isn't. And uh, we want to recognize that and not be lured by the enemy into committing a sin because of the use of theology. So Jesus answered him at that time and he said, it is written again, thou shalt not tempt the Lord thy God. So for example, when people say that you can be forgiven of a marriage and remarry because God just wants you to be happy. You can answer that temptation, that theology, with, it is written again, thou shalt not commit adultery. You see, because there are basic moral principles in the Bible that always hold. So it's never okay to commit adultery. And it's unrelated to whatever circumstances led to you being married in such a way that you're unhappy with it, you see? So we want to remember the proper use of scripture in spiritual warfare. And, and we want to also remember that the enemy sometimes misuses scripture to discourage us. And one way that the enemy does this is he'll say something like, well, the scripture says, that um, that those who don't have the Holy Spirit are none of his. And then if you haven't received the Holy Spirit yet, you can be cast into doubt about your salvation because that's a misuse of the scripture. And those who have obeyed the gospel of Jesus Christ and been baptized in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of their sins are promised by God, the promise of God is for them to receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. And there's nothing you can do to earn it. And it's a gift and you're, it's promised unto you. And this is written throughout the scripture. But the enemy will take a little portion of scripture and whisper that into your ear to get you to feel fearful and doubtful and to give up on the promises only because you're waiting for the promises and accuse you of having things like weak faith or doubt. Let me tell you something about God. God loved the world so much that he sent his only begotten son to die for mankind's sin while we were yet sinners. And think about that for a minute. He sent his own son, who was not a sinner, to die for sinners 
while they were yet sinners. So while we were yet lost in our iniquity and filthy and vile in the eyes of our Creator, He sent His only begotten Son, His perfect holy child, who was without sin, to pay the price for us. And if you're a parent, you might be able to grasp the magnitude of this love. Would you send your child to die for the sins of some other person? Would you do that? Because that's what divine love is, and that's what God is like. So once we're saved, we've been baptized in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of our sins. God isn't now sitting up in heaven saying, Oh, yeah, but you have weak faith. I think I'll send you to hell. God isn't like that. The enemy is like that, and he would like to convince you that you're unworthy, and therefore, and therefore, you're not going to make it. And this is a trick of the enemy. God loves people and wants them to be able to be saved and has provided a way for them that not one of us deserved. Not one of us de deserved. And when the enemy points out to you that you're unworthy, well, guess what? We're all unworthy. The difference between a human being who's a sinner and a fallen angel such as Satan, the difference is, is that we can repent and be redeemed by the blood of Jesus Christ. And a fallen angel cannot. Satan is envious of human beings because we can be saved by the blood of Jesus Christ. So he does everything in his power including twisting scripture, to convince us that we're unworthy and that we're not going to make it and that God is going to reject us. And it's just not true. These are things that are perversions of the word. Now, it is possible for a person to willfully turn away from the goodness of God. That is possible. It is possible to sin against the Holy Spirit. But believe me, the young Christians who come to me who feel doubt and fear about their faith, that this isn't at all what's happening with them. What's happening instead is they have weak faith because they're young. And God, our Heavenly Father, looks at this young Christian with compassion and grace and mercy. And when we as a young Christian turn to him in sincerity and, and cry out to him and say, Father, my faith is weak. Please help me. He will, because he's a good and loving father. So, the third temptation that the devil tried with the Son of God was to get him to bow down before Satan in exchange for the things of this world. And this is something that is a very serious matter that none of us wants to do. But it's basically about when we are saved, once we've been bought with the blood of Jesus Christ, we no longer want the things of this world. And Satan tries to tempt us into wanting the things of this world. And, and when we seek after those things, it, it's a corruption of our faith. It, it makes us into um, lukewarm Christians because we we want to be Christians, but we also want the things of this world. And that waters down our faith. And that's something that Satan does in order to gradually lure us away from the kingdom of God. And it might start with wanting something that God would want us to have and getting us so distracted with that thing that we end up off the path. Now, when this happens as Christians, what we can do is when we recognize that we have fallen away a little bit from serving God, from the, the truth that this world means nothing and the things in it are passing away, that when we recognize that we've made a mistake like that, we can simply turn to our Father and say, Father, I made a mistake. I have sinned. I have sinned. Please forgive me. For this, I recognize that these things that I've been chasing after don't mean anything. And help me to walk again in your word and return 
to the word because jesus said in verse 10 matthew 4 he said then Je said saith jesus unto him get thee hence satan for it is written thou shalt worship the lord thy god and him only shalt thou serve when we're in the wilderness it can feel lonely it can feel like it's lasting forever it can feel like other people are being blessed and we're not and yet none of these things are true what's happening is god is refining us as a young christian to be able to rely upon him and this is the crucial most fundamental piece of being found worthy in the end is that we relied on the lord that we sought the lord that we loved his word that we we asked him to help us that we kept turning to him over and over and over again verily there are many distractions many things that can lead us away from having that kind of complete and total reliance upon jesus christ and we don't want to be distracted so of course there's many things there's things like uh, education there's things like employment there's things like family matters things that are going on with our children or our husband or or our wife as the case may be or our parents it might be our friends it might be our our home our living situation it might have something to do with our health it might have to do with something with someone else's health but the various things that come along when we are young in the faith in order to distract us from the kingdom of god that when we recognize that that's happening there is an answer and it's what a little lost lamb might do if a little lost lamb somehow wandered away a little bit from the shepherd and got tangled up in some kind of briar patch that little lamb is going to cry out it's going to you know bleat and bleat and bleat until the shepherd hears and the shepherd will come and untangle that little lamb and we can trust that that will happen we don't have to fear god to the extent that we think that now that we're saved now that he sent his only son his only begotten son to die for us that now the minute we make a mistake he's ready to just like send us off and, and le let us suffer god isn't like that but we have to remember that the one thing that that we need to remember is to continue to cry out to him and when we cry out to him and we look for his will in his word that he will answer us he will hear our prayer and he will answer us and he's not unkind so i want to show you this let's go to romans romans keep going by it romans chapter um, romans chapter 10 and let's read verse 9 here it says that if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the lord jesus and shalt believe in thine heart that god hath raised him from the dead thou shalt be saved verse 10 for with the heart man believeth unto righteousness and with the mouth confession is made unto unto salvation verse 11 for the scripture saith whosoever believeth on him shall not be ashamed verse 12 for there is no difference between the jew and the greek for the same lord is over all the same lord over all is rich unto all that call upon him for whosoever shall call upon the name of the lord shall be saved now, this isn't how we're saved from our sins we're saved from our sins when we repent and are baptized in the name of jesus christ for the remission of our sins and we receive the gift of the holy ghost or we're waiting for the gift of the holy ghost that's how we're saved from our sins but the way that we're saved from the briar patch when we get tangled up 
is when we call upon the name of the Lord, believing in his resurrection, knowing that the Son of God not only died for human sin, but he was resurrected by the Father into eternal glory. And that when we have obeyed his gospel, we are promised, we are promised the gift of the Holy Ghost and the ability to walk in righteousness until we attain the kingdom. And when we run into difficulty, we call upon the name of the Lord. When you're in the wilderness, when you're in the wilderness, we do as Jesus Christ did when he was in the wilderness. And he continued to speak the word of God, to trust in his Father, and to call upon his Father for, for assistance. And the word of God is where we find assistance. It's not unusual at all for a young Christian to feel feelings of inadequacy, that their faith is weak, that somehow they don't measure up. What I would say about that is none of us measures up. That all the righteousness that any person on this planet currently has comes from Jesus Christ or they don't have it. Any power we have comes from God. And the truth that we manifest, the love that we manifest, is something that we have received. And when we diligently seek him, it pours forth from us like a river of living water. But we're not righteous of ourselves, you see. So I thought to make this little message for those of you who are feeling that somehow it's not working out the way you thought it would when you chose to be baptized in Jesus' name. Maybe there's a problem in your family. Maybe there's a financial problem. Maybe you're faced with with some fears and dilemmas that you didn't expect. The reason why this is happening is that your Father in heaven wants you to rely on him in all these things. And if you do, he is well able to provide for you every single thing that you need. The walk of a Christian is to rely on God. And when we're in the wilderness, that's a great place to learn how to do that. And when we have learned that, that's a lesson that will carry us through many trials and tribulations in the future. When we have learned this crucial precept of being a Christian, then thereafter we will have a faith where we'll remember that the Lord ministered to us. He sent his holy angels to intervene when we continued to dwell in his word, to speak his word, and to resist the devil. You see, the devil doesn't give up the minute we pass through the waters of baptism. As a matter of fact, that's when the battle begins. And one of the first things the enemy tries to do is convince us that somehow we're not worthy. What I would say to you is to say to the devil what Jesus said. So let's go to Matthew four again and read what Jesus said to the devil. He said, get thee hence Satan, get thee hence Satan, for it is written, thou shalt worship the Lord thy God, and him only shalt thou serve. The word of God is where we find the will of God and the spirit of God. The word of God is where we find comfort and strength and the enemy will do anything he can to distract you from that. The minute you sense that happening, that's the time to open the word of God and get on your knees and cry out to the Father for him to help you. And he will, because he loves you. All right, then. I remain here for you. Feel free to email me or comment in the comment section below. And may the word of God go forth today and bless many in Jesus' name. Amen.